Hello viewers, this is a brief update on the Newman motor build. I've made a few changes to it and I've determined a few facts that I would like to share. Currently it is running faster than I have ever seen it run before. The reason for that is I have reduced the the amount of wire on the coil. I've taken it from 1.4k ohms. Uh, then I brought it down to 1100 ohms and now it is currently sitting at about 800 ohms. Every time I do that um, I bring it closer to a conventional motor. So currently it's running at 400 volts and about 3 milliamps, maybe 2 milliamps. So about one watt. Now, a conventional motor is a good thing. It has a lot of power, it has a lot of torque, and it's quite small. Um, it also has a few shortcomings. Because this motor is getting fairly conventional, I can demonstrate that now by applying some load to the shaft and watching the input power. Now that's quite a lot of load but that's bringing it up to about 3 watts um, input power. Um, I still feel that that is an awful lot of power um, for 3 watts. However, before I made these changes, when there was more wire on it, um, a significant point is that loading it down would make less difference to the input power because it was doing less RPM. So back EMF had less of an impact, which is good. Um, so what I've managed to determine is the bigger and more cumbersome you make these engines, the higher efficiency you will get, but they will be more expensive and larger. So I could make one like this and it might well be three or four hundred percent efficient or more, or I could simply double the amount of wire on it and make it eight hundred percent efficient, but it would produce less overall power because it would be slower. Um, now I could just increase the voltage and circumvent that problem, but I've opted for doing this the modern way with transistors. Um, traditionally they're done with spark gaps, um, but they have problems of their own. Um, arc over on spark gaps causes drag which slows your motor down and also creates a lot of interference and there are a lot of problems associated with that, so I've decided to stick with the electronics because that's my area of training. That's my area of expertise, that's what I do. So before I conclude this video and that particular result, one thing I would note is that the input current, which is only a couple of milliamps, is basically unchanged. What I've noted about this motor is but if I drive it with a couple of hundred volts instead of 400, or if I take it all the way up to 600, it basically uses the same input current. That's because the unconventional aspect of this motor is this magnet generating voltage in this enormous coil, which is like having two inputs. You've got one input from your power supply over here and you've actually got a second parallel input from your magnet and that will reduce the input power. Um, it's like having two power sources um, which is really good and that's why if you load it down this power source will produce less power and then the actual power from your power supply will be more as required. Um, which is 
actually a fairly conventional aspect to all DC electric motors, it must be said. But because this motor produces such enormous torque, potentially you can wire it. In other words, have a huge amount of wire set it up to produce a huge amount of torque at a low speed and then you can simply load it down and it will basically have no effect. So you can extract torque for basically free. Um, that's what I've managed to determine by continuously stripping more wire off this thing. And I will keep doing that to see what else there is to learn. Um, but soon enough, I'm going to do two things. One of them is 3D print a new spool, then build a nicer one that's slightly better fitting, less gaps and spaces. This is very good, but I think I can do better in the geometry if I 3D print it. And the second thing I want to do is buckle to user requests and find an appropriate generator so I can prove my claims, not just by looking at the meter, but by making sure there's not a tangle of gratuitous wires everywhere and actually run it from itself. Create a self-looping system, which is frankly pointless, um, other than to have a little bit of a laugh and prove it can be done. It's actually quite difficult to do because all my generators are very large and require higher RPMs. What I want for this project is a generator that's quite small because I don't need to produce much power and I need it to produce power at a very low RPM. So that's actually a very rare type of transformer. So I might be able to jerry-rig these which put out an AC sine wave. Um, I can, I've got to fix them first um, which is pretty indicative of anything secondhand from England on eBay. Um, at least from the 19th century. Uh, and then feed it through a transformer. And that might well do exactly what I want. Or exactly what the requests have asked me to do. Self-loop this motor. Turning it from a questionably practical free energy machine into a silly perpetual motion device. But hey, that's what the people want. So I might have a laugh and do just that. Okay. Thanks for watching. Happy to share the revelation about voltages and whatnot. A very important one. Line plenty of wire on there. Make it extremely torquey. And then extract that torque for free. Because it will not slow your motor down. Therefore, two parallel power sources will keep the load off the primary one. So, hope you enjoyed. See you back next time.